Hey guys, Valvon Bellaboni here. Today I wanted to show you how to make two nodes uh, which you can move between using the Adventure Maker and View. So the thing about this Adventure Maker is that it has this nice cubic panorama plugin. So you can make your own 360 degrees panoramic nodes and it comes with this Stitcher uh, software as well. And there are instructions how to make those in various softwares here. So you have a tutorial for Bryce here, and you have some additional for Pavray, Blender, View, and Terragen, and I believe this one for, for 3D Max as well. Yeah, we have one from 3D Studio Max as well. All right, so in View, I'm gonna start by creating a terrain from the procedure terrain preset menu. I'm gonna select Strata 6. Yes, we want to delete that plane. And I'm gonna add an atmosphere. I'll select this one. Like that. And I'm gonna adjust the lighting slightly. So I'm gonna select the light and from the left view I'm gonna move it up slightly. And also I want the light to come more from the side, like that, and looking from the preview it's kind of too bright, so I'm going to adjust the intensity here, in the light menu, to maybe, let's see how zero looks like, should be okay, and I want to lower the quality setting as well, so we get a nice fast rendering on this guy as well. So this is for, for the lighting. And now the starting position is really... You want to keep the camera at, at 1.8 meters above the ground. And you want to make sure it's locked. All right? And see here we have the FOV of 54.4. This is the um, field of view of our camera. And it needs to be 90 to work with the uh, Adventure Maker. Since we need to render six uh, square images facing front, left, right, back, up and down. Each of them needs to be 90 degrees. And if you don't have this setting here, you have to go to the file menu options and make sure it's it's selected here show camera fov in object properties and if you have this deselected you're gonna view as focal length that's in millimeters instead all right so having that selected we are gonna move our camera to a neutral position at zero zero And this is something funny going on. The height is changing. And I want to keep it at 1.8. I want to lock it there. All right. So our initial camera angle, the pitch is, you know, up and down. So 90 will be so 90 will be kind of straightforward and we want to use the yaw as zero which is straightforward as well just like that so this is our first you know straight ahead render and since we are going to render a few of them we can actually use the timeline to uh, select all the keyframes and make all the rotations in one go all right so i'm going to add the timeline just like that. And I'm going to zoom it in slightly. Since I'm only going to need 11 or 12 frames, I'm going to, I want to see them close up. All right. So for the first one, I'm adding my first keyframe here. Then moving the timeline slider to frame 01 
and I'm rotating the camera to the right which is lowering the yaw to minus 90 which equals 270 so I'm gonna enter 270 and I'm gonna add a keyframe I'm gonna move to the next one lower that to 180 which is straight back I'm gonna add a keyframe move to the next one lower that to 90 which is straight left I'm gonna add a keyframe and now I'm back at full rotation so I'm gonna reset the yaw to zero and I'm gonna pitch straight up which is zero and I'm gonna add a keyframe moving to the next I'm gonna change the pitch to 180 which is straight down on the ground and I'm gonna add another keyframe and I'm gonna render this current six faces or renders in one go and then I'm gonna move the camera and re-render another six renders okay and here's another very important thing you need to have when doing that first of all render options you want to have user settings then we are gonna lower the quality here disable super sampling we don't need reflections just want to make things go fast we want to render to the screen and use a screen ratio of 1 1 which is square I'm gonna use a resolution of 800 times 800 I'm gonna click OK I'm going to animation options and here I can select the uh, sequence which is 0 to 5 and I can also select my file here so I'm gonna browse and I'm gonna select well anything goes here I'm gonna select node BMP and I'm selecting BMP to preserve the quality because we are gonna load these images and stitch them to another one and they would therefore lose some quality so I'm gonna keep them on BMP which doesn't degenerate the quality all right so having that selected I have one more thing to do and this is really really important click on advanced animation options and here you have multiple frame anti-aliasing this is great when you're doing animations or you know flying camera or moving characters but in this case since we need six fresh camera angles we don't want to have any multi-frame anti-aliasing since that's each frame is going to interfere with the next one so that's going to look really ugly and with that said I can just click on render animation and we got to go alright so when you have all the six renders done you have the front right back left top and down view we are simply getting back to our 3D software here and we are gonna move the camera slightly backwards since we are pretty close to this mountain range here so I'm gonna move the camera at the first frame slightly back and I don't want that to be a huge change in position so let's say we might want to use 8 meters and for each of the frames we need to make the same change I'm just gonna double check so that it doesn't jump and it doesn't fine and we need to keep the height at 1.8 meters above the ground for each of the frames as well and it seems to be all right so great so all the rotations are the same so we're just gonna bring out the render options here and select a different file name 